This is the Canal Skywave, road surfer's camper castle. I'm going to give you a quick tour to show you all its functions and what the interior looks like. To get into the camper, you have an electric step, and to extend it, you click once here on this switch. It is best to take a step to the side because it moves out relatively quickly, and then you can get into your camper quite comfortably. Here, you have a convenient mosquito net that covers the door. And just be aware that in the dark, you can hardly see it, so please don't bump into it. The dining room in each camper castle comfortably seats four. The dining table is adjustable, allowing you to turn the table in all directions, as well as moving it forwards, backwards, or to the side. To move the table, there is a black lever that you click down, then you are free to move it how you please. There is also plenty of extra seating on the benches and the two front seats that rotate. Here is how you rotate the front seats. You start by sliding the seat forward by pulling this black bar. The next step is adjusting the backrest so it is in a vertical position via this wheel. Now you can rotate the seat by pushing this switch back here to the side. Now you have enough space in your dining room for the entire campsite. This camper is full of storage space. For example, here, under the bench, is a box perfectly suited to store any number of things. It opens here via this flap. There are also these four large compartments with lots of space. Two on this side, two on that side. Up front is another very practical storage area, which also has two compartments on the side. There are two large windows here, both with a mosquito net and a blackout blind. You can open this one by first releasing the lock. Just press up once here at the bottom, then you can pinch this together and slide it to the side. There is also a large window over here that you can open by sliding these hinges to the side. You can lock it in place at different levels from the outside. To close it again, push it all the way until it doesn't go any further, all the way to the end, and then pull this back in, and you can close it again. This window also has a mosquito net and a blackout blind fitted. By the way, down here in this floor flap in the dining room, you'll find the first aid kit, as well as the warning triangle. Welcome to your huge kitchen. Here you have a cooker with three gas hobs, a sink with running water, a huge fridge, and lots of storage space. Up here is a big cupboard, various drawers, a cutlery drawer, another two big compartments, a few smaller compartments here to store spices or other things, and this cupboard here on the side, you can even pull out two baskets. It's important to lock them when traveling so they don't roll out. You also have three 230 volt sockets here. One here, one here, and one up here. They only work if your camper is connected to the outside power supply. You also have a USB port here, and that works even if you're not connected to electricity. And up here, you have a practical kitchen light. In order to be able to cook, you need gas, of course. So you first open the large gas bottle at the back, and when it is open, you will find another switch here, the one with the cooking pot, which you turn upwards so that the gas can flow from here to the cooker. It is important that you open the window here before you switch on the cooker. It opens like this. Then you can engage it here in different stages, and only now can you turn on the cooker. To do this, press the button once, hold it down, and turn it to the left. 
Then this flame comes on here. To switch the cooker off again, simply turn the wheel to the right again. Here at the top on the black dot, and then the cooker is off again. Please remember to close the large gas bottle at the back after cooking and, for safety reasons, to close this tap. This is your fridge. In order to open it, it's best to first remove the fuses here, which you should always have closed during the journey so that the fridge doesn't open accidentally. There's plenty of space in here, and there's even an ice box up here. You can switch the fridge on and off up here. To switch it on, first press and hold this point until the lights come on. You can select the different cooling levels via this thermometer symbol. Three is always good. Let's set it like this. Here you have the gas flame and the electricity connection. The refrigerator can run on both gas and electricity. This means that if you are currently connected to an external power supply, you can choose to run the fridge on electricity. If you do not have an external power supply, but the gas bottle is connected and on, you can also run the fridge on gas. When traveling on the road, the electricity and the gas bottle should not be on or connected, but you can run the fridge from the battery. That would be this symbol here, and depending on how it is to be powered, you can choose that by clicking on the mode button above here. If you are now connected to both the electricity and your gas bottle, you can set it so that the refrigerator decides for itself whether it accesses the gas bottle or the electricity. And if you press and hold here again, the fridge will switch off again. If the refrigerator is to run on gas, it is not only important that the large gas bottle is turned on, but also the gas tap with the frost symbol, which is for the refrigerator, when it is up, it is open, and when it is to the side, it is closed. This is your bedroom, which has a super cozy bed and lots of storage space with cupboards up here. Here you also have a practical shelf with a mirror and two reading lamps. You can turn the big lights on and off in the bedroom via these light switches. And here you have a 230 volt socket, but this only works if your camper is connected to the outside power supply. You can also use this USB port when you are not connected to the outside power. For example, to charge your mobile phone. Here you see a big window. You open it by pushing these black levers to the side. This is how it closes again, and you have a mosquito net and a blackout blind for sleeping. You can gaze up at the starry sky from your bed because you have a skylight. You can even open it by pulling this bar down and then pushing it forward. You can then lock the window into place at different levels. And when you close it, make sure that these plastic devices really lock into place again so that your bed doesn't get wet. Your roof window also has a mosquito net and a blackout blind. Here you can see another curtain, so you have privacy when you want to be alone and you can even make your bed a bit bigger. Here you can see the slatted frame, which you can lift up and have access to your garage. You can also fold out the bed extension and extend your mattress a bit so that your feet don't lie in the air. By the way, you have a really nice big wardrobe here. You not only have this wonderful bed back here, but also a second bed up here. You can easily move it down. To do that, we have to make a little space down here and fold down this backrest once and on the other side as well. Then take out the two headrests. 
You see these two black straps there. You loosen them once, and you can pull the bed down very easily. Now we only need a ladder to climb up. You'll find it here under the other bed. You hook it in here, then you can climb up and make yourself comfortable. You even have two reading lights here, which you can switch on by clicking on them with your finger. Here is the air conditioner. It only works when the camper is connected to an external power supply. When you are connected, this light here lights up orange and you operate it with a remote control. If you hold this button down, you can switch the air conditioner on and then select the temperature using the minus and plus buttons. You also have the fan symbol here. If you click on it, you will see that the different levels can be set on this bar. This is now full program. This is level one. And if you click on it several times, you now have full power. You can also see small wheels here. You can use them to open and close the ventilation shafts here. If you hold the button down for a long time, the air conditioner turns off again. And here is your private bathroom with toilet and shower, plus some storage. At the back, for example, you have a cupboard where you can store toiletries. And here you have the shower. We'll get to how it works in a moment. But first, I'll show you how the toilet works. First of all, you lift the toilet seat, clearly, which you can lock in place when on the road. To open it, pull this lever to the side, then the toilet is unlocked, so to say. After you're done, press this blue button here to flush. Hold it down briefly, and when you're finished, close the lid again with the same lever you used to open it. Here you will see three different indicators. When the toilet cassette is empty, a green light comes on. When it is half full, it turns orange. And when it turns red, you know the cassette is full and you have to empty it. I will show you how this works later. First, I'll explain the shower. This is your wash basin with a tap and you can also use the tap as a shower head. To do this, first, push it to the side so you can fold down this wall here. To do this, loosen this device here and then push the wall back. Once it's here, fold this flap forward here. You'll notice it's magnetic. And now you have a completely new room, your shower. Now, just pull the tap out here and hang it up here as a shower head and you are ready to wash off the salt water. In order to push the shower head back again, you have to help a little here with your hand and push the hose back very carefully. If you want to rebuild your bathroom, please make sure that the tap is not positioned sideways. Otherwise, you will push the wall against it and it will break. Just push it to the side so you can easily slide the wall back. Up here in the bathroom, you also have a window and a skylight, which you can, of course, open. It works like the other windows and skylights in the camper. In order for the toilet to flush and the shower to work, you have to switch on the water pump and you need water in the tank. If you want to take a hot shower, you have to switch on the boiler. I'll show you how to do that now. Here, above your entrance door, you can see the onboard computer where you have this symbol at the bottom left. That's your water tank. When you press on it, you'll see how much water you still have in the tank. At the moment, it is at 20%. You also have this symbol here, which is the pump. 
If you click on it once and the light glows orange, the pump is switched on. Please remember to switch it off again after using the toilet or taking a shower, otherwise it will run continuously. So, now you know how the toilet flushes and the shower works. If you want to have a hot shower, you first have to open the gas cylinder at the back of the camper. When you have it turned on, turn on this middle gas tap on as well in the kitchen cupboard. When it is open, like this, you can switch on the boiler. To activate the boiler, you just need to use the black wheel on the board computer. Use the black wheel to scroll until a boiler symbol appears, then click on it once. It is now off. If you turn the wheel further, you can choose different levels. I'll just say boost. Now the boiler is running. It takes about 20 minutes for the water to get warm. Please remember to turn the boiler off again after your shower. You can also do that here. Just click on it again, turn it all the way to the left, click on off, and don't forget to turn the gas taps off as well, for your safety, and so that you don't use gas unnecessarily. To keep your camper warm and cozy, you can, of course, turn on the auxiliary heating. Because it runs on gas, you switch it on by first turning on the large gas bottle at the back and then turning this middle tap upwards. Then it is open and then you can switch on the auxiliary heating on the onboard computer up here. To do this, first click on this wheel and the bus lights up here or flashes. You also have to go in there, click on it again. Right now it's off, which means the heating is off. If you keep turning this wheel, you can select the temperature you want in the camper. I'm going to say 22 degrees. Confirm that, and if you then turn the wheel further, you'll come to this fan. Click on it once. You can select the different levels, eco or high, depending on how quickly you want it to get warm. Click on it, and make sure that when the auxiliary heating is running, you have these ventilation shafts free, i.e. that there is no luggage in front of them, because the warm air comes into your camper through these shafts. To switch off the auxiliary heating, click on this wheel, then on the bus, and then turn the wheel all the way to the left until off appears, and then confirm this and the heating is off again. And remember to close the big gas bottle and, for safety reasons, turn the knob again here too. The large gas cylinder at the back of the camper that runs the auxiliary heating, the refrigerator and the cooker is back here behind this flap. And there it is. If you turn the valve up here to the left, the gas bottle is open and the gas flows. If you turn the valve to the right again, the gas stops. If you are wondering what this is, it is a smartphone or tablet holder. You can pull it up and click here where the arrow is. Then you can hook your smartphone or tablet into it. Like all the windows in the camper, you can also darken the two front windows. To do this, press your fingers in here like this. Then you can very carefully pull the slats forward on the lower rail. Do the same with the big ones at the front. Press once with your fingers here like this, and then you can pull the slats together. They stick together magnetically in the middle. You have this beautiful panorama window here. Imagine you are at the coast or in the mountains, then you have a beautiful view, not like we have here in our studio setup. You can even open this window by pressing on the black buttons and pulling the levers to the side. Then you can tilt the window up. You'll hear clicking noises. These are different levels in which your window can then lock into place. You also have a mosquito net and a darkening option.
Now I'll show you the tanks and the external connections. Here you have the diesel tank, directly below that the AdBlue tank. AdBlue needs to be refilled every 5,000 kilometers or so. You can get it at any petrol station. When it's time, it's displayed in the dashboard. It is important that when the display shows that you have to refill the AdBlue tank, you do so. Otherwise, you will not be able to continue driving. Right next to the AdBlue tank, you have the fresh water tank, the power connection, and a few other things. Here's how the electricity connection works. Road surface supplies a power cable that plugs into the camper and through this flap. Then you simply need to plug it in here. Now your camper is connected to the external power. Don't forget to disconnect the cable again and take it with you when you continue your journey. This is your fresh water tank. To fill it, twist off the blue cover and fill the tank with a garden hose or a water canister. Down here you will see two grey levers. At the end of the journey, you should empty both the wastewater and the freshwater tank. When the lever is down, it is closed. As you can see by the label, if you turn the lever over to the right, you will open the tank. This is the freshwater tank, and this is the wastewater tank. And there are special places at campsites for this, so don't just pour your so-called grey water out to the countryside, but into designated areas. As you can see, there are two levers, one on the right and one on the left. If you're wondering what they are, you can either empty the fresh water tank completely, or you can keep 20 litres in it. This makes the camper lighter for the journey ahead, but keeps some water in the tank just in case. To do this, turn this dial up. Make sure that the water tank is already drained, at least up to here, otherwise the water will come towards you. Then you will see a blue bar at the back. To drain the tank down to 20 litres, pull this bar up again until it clicks. Then the tank will drain down to the last 20 litres. Then you simply pull the bar down again so that you can fill the tank again or drain it completely. Here in the back corner, you can see another black box. It'll disconnect the power connection here so that you can see it too. If the boiler doesn't work, this blue button pops out. This is a safety feature. If it is below 6 degrees, the boiler empties itself so it doesn't freeze. When it's out and you want to use the boiler, i.e. you want the boiler to start up again, then you just have to press this blue button in here and the boiler will start up again. Then you can see this white cord here, which is the so-called string lock. If you have the auxiliary heating running in the camper in winter, then the two water tanks are also automatically heated, i.e. the fresh water tank and the waste water tank, so that the water does not freeze. If you are on the road in spring or autumn, for example, and using the auxiliary heating, but you know the water cannot freeze because it is not cold enough, you can activate the so-called string lock. To do this, pull out the cord here, then clamp it here. The two water tanks will no longer be heated and the interior will warm up even faster. This is the exhaust air from the auxiliary heating and you shouldn't really be down here, but I'll open it up anyway. There's the battery box for the curious. At the very end of your camper, you will find the toilet cassette. To take it out, click on these buttons with two fingers. Then you can open the lid, and this is the toilet box. To take it out, click this switch upwards, then pull it out. To empty it, turn this tube away, twist the cap off, and tip it downwards at an angle.
To make it run faster, you can engage the air valve by pressing this green button on top. Then everything runs out faster. It goes without saying, only empty this at designated places. For example, camping sites and not in the wild. Once you are done, rinse the cassette with water and then simply screw the cover back on. Push the tube to the side again and slide the cassette back. This big hatch at the back is your garage. As you can see, you have a lot of storage space. There is space for your luggage, but it is also where you find a lot of the road surfer equipment that we supply you with. For example, a power cable to connect you to the external power supply, a water canister, chocks in case you park on a slope, a very practical kitchen box with everything you need, like cutlery, plates, cups, pots and so on, two camping chairs, and a camping table. You can also see a pole on the side here. That's the pole you need to extend the awning. I'll show you how that works right now. Up here is your awning, which we will now extend using this pole. To make the pole longer, making it easier to reach the crank, just unscrew this here, extend it, screw it back. To extend the awning, use the pole to rotate this. And simply extend the awning out until you can reach the awning legs. Pull the awning legs outwards once they are accessible. To extend it the rest of the way, pull the lower part downward, holding it steady with our foot and slide the upper part upwards. You secure the whole structure with this switch up here. It can be a bit difficult at first, but just go for it, you can't break anything. Then repeat the process on the other side. First, push the metal attachments outwards, take the leg out, Extend the lower part, hold it steady with your foot, and push the upper part of the bar upwards. Then lock it in place by clicking the switch upwards. To make it more stable, slide the legs a little further forward so that you can crank the awning out more. It already looks nice, but it's not done until the two chairs and the table are in position. Here's how it looks when it's finished, with both chairs and table set up. Setting up the table is not that complicated. Just fold the legs out, then attach this rod here and put the cover over it. Then do the same on the other side. Then simply extend the legs all the way, pulling these tabs to the side sliding the legs out, then fastening the tabs again. These are luxury camping chairs with a pocket and a cup holder.